was that when you had Chris? Oh, I, I did. I was just trying to. Okay. I've heard you all talk. talk to
He will if we'll let him. We'll sing this one here. We've got the quartet with us. We'll turn into this one. Number 50. <coughs> <coughs>
good to be an old time preacher. Good old and good to be on the way home, brother Hill. Nothing coming to everything, brother, to enter into our Savior's mouth. He died for the world that we could have life and have more money. Ain't that one for today to know? Brother, in our hearts and our minds today, well, here I go eating it. The Lord, I'm telling you, Brother Jeremy, I don't know. Yeah, do too, brother. All the prayer, brother. We're here in half church today. The Lord is the Lord. You've been so good to me, little brother Jeremy. Yeah. Yes. The good Lord. Ain't no way I can pay what I owe No. No, no. Good. Sister Monty and the group of saints, the table is spread with all those good, perfect gifts that come down from God out of heaven. Talk about the Word of God and say it. And I pray to many times, Lord, give us enough mind to eat from that table. It's up to us to eat from that table. We've said it all the time. And it's here, and we can eat from it, and we can rejoice today and give the Lord praise and glory. <coughs> I drank from the living water, his spirit now in me dwells, with one drink the Savior gave me victory over death and hell. I was an empty vessel, now the water is flowing. One drink of the living water will last through eternity. I drink from the living water that washes away every sin. Amen. He gave me the living water. Walking through dry places, exhausted and on the brink, my soul was weary and thirsty. When he reached down and gave me a drink, I was a lowly sinner and a poor sinner still am I. But I drank from the living water, and now I will never die. Yeah. I drank from the living water that washes away every sin. He gave me the living water. Will you be lost? Will you be crying? Be among the 
enjoyed this. Amen. Well, greater love is any man than this. He will lay down his life for his friend. Jesus says, you are, you are my friend. You do what we are going to command you to do. Seemed like that little still small voice told me, said, son, you ain't got the mind to remember all that, son. 
That's you can forget all the things, a lot of them that you've done, but I know all about them, and I'll forgive every one of them. I'll apply that perfect blood that will all be wiped out. Think about how good that it is that God gave His Son, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him should not, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Come not. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He's already condemned. When I was out in sin, I was already condemned. But it comes that the, the, every individual will come out from amongst the world and that we wouldn't be in condemnation anymore, but we'd come to the, the light. And Jesus is the light. Think about that. And have life abiding down inside of us. How wonderful is that again today that he's still sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercessions on our behalf. And he's, hey, he's the same kind. That spirit, I mean, it's, that's that drawing power. That spirit, same kind. Church, every one of us the same kind. Every one of us. Yeah. Whosoever will, let them come and drink from the water of life, as they were saying about that first song. Wonderful song. It's got good messages in it. We'll soon be going to prayer. If you've got any slides you want to mention, feel free. Yeah. Yes. Brother Ricky, it's pretty puny, brother Jimmy, and you know, you know, Yeah. Not really good. Yeah. Me and you came out to try to see you. And you know, my wife and the two girls, they were doing good. Thought that she's not good, but they were good. They were good. They were good. We all do, but we do it. And we don't give him enough thanks. We don't. He's all I need. Yeah. He's all I ever wanted. If you didn't get him right, drink, you can stay there. Oh, good. That's the one 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 that's Us, 
And them old boys said, and pinned it down in the book of John, the first chapter, we beheld his glory as the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. They looked right upon him, and they know all about what they pinned down. By the Spirit, God told them exactly what to write down, and it's still just as true and powerful today as it ever was. Amen. So if you're wondering if these things are true or not, sometimes we, we want to make things clear to our people that's on the outside that this is the only truth that's in the world. And if you've got the truth in you, this right here, and still down in here, and you can have it. Amen. It said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Amen. This book that it's, made, it's printed down in here is going to melt with further heat. But that word ain't going to change everything. And what he wants about that word is to be put right down here. Yeah. Right inside of us, in our inward being. And that's called Jesus. Think about that, how wonderful it is. Anybody else before we go to prayer? Brother Charlie, I like everybody to remember my family, remember my children. Yeah. And, uh, of all the members of sick and afflicted out here in the world. Yeah. I'll be blessed. There's a lot of it anymore. Brother Charlie, as you were saying about when in repentance, you couldn't remember all the sins that you committed. No man. That's right. Can anybody in here remember all the people that needs to be prayed for? Mm -hmm. I can't. That's where our faith comes in. We do our best. Trusting in Him. <coughs> faith, the seventh of the things hopeful. Yep. Yep. Evidence. Yep. Things not seen. Mm -hmm. Now it says that our elders received a good report. Abraham, he took Isaac up to the mountain. He had faith. Amen. Great. He told him we should come down and and worship again. They obtained a good report, the old elders did, of God. Absolutely. Anybody we pray, we pray with faith, believe in God knows each and every one. Mm -hmm. And we have the love in our hearts. Right? <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. For Jesus. That sleeve that was sown. Mm, brother. Mother Mary, I call her Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, overshadowed by the power <coughs> of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And conceived and brought forth our Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. And when when it, Elizabeth had already Conceived of the forerunner, John the Baptist, she had already conceived. The scripture tells us, brethren, that we know we passed from death unto life yeah. because of our love of the brethren. Yeah. I feel love this morning. Love mm -hmm. one another. Yeah. And Mary went up to visit Elizabeth. Glory to God in heaven. The very sound of her voice, the babe leaped within Elizabeth's womb, the forerunner of Christ Jesus. I am not that light, but I bear witness of that light, that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The feeling of love, brethren, one towards another, profound. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Remember our family, Brother Charlie. Remember my mom and uh, remember that revival. They say it's starting tonight, but I say it can start this morning. I'd like to see about eight or ten saved this morning. That'd be good. Yeah. 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 Feel the spirit Lord. here this morning. Thank you, Brother Charlie. Anybody else? Brother Charlie, I've got the spirit all morning myself. I've eaten from the table this morning all morning long. And I, can't, I don't know where it comes from. I'm so glad that I heard that voice. Praise God for everyone. That awakened the old man on the inside and caused me to seek after it. Something that I didn't know nothing about at the time, brother. There ain't nothing going to heaven save that which come down from God out of heaven. 
And why has it my heart and life it didn't come by the enticing words of man's wisdom and through the things of this world, but from God out of heaven. That's right. The same spirit that moved up on uh, Mother Mary, dear my brother. The same spirit that was there on the day of Pentecost, whatever man understood in his own tongue and his own language. I don't care where you're at, you're out in this world. Now, brother, when God comes down in that great power and touches people, they will understand in their heart. And they may not know the word that's coming out, but they will understand in their heart and that it's coming from the blessed land, the Beulah, from the place where God is, because it touches the heart and the soul. Praise the Lord. Yes. The bread of heaven, he that endureth to the end, and will I give him to eat of that his mouth. And brother, I think we're in, we're in of it today. Yeah. Uh, that which giveth life uh, to us. Uh, that his man, feeding the man on the inside. We're weak creatures, we're much undeserving of the goodness that he bestows upon us. Amen. Amen. I feel the love of God in my heart towards my fellow man. Yeah. We gotta try to be receptive of what we feel. Yeah. I'm a weak creature. Hard for me to speak, but I trust in the one who makes me able. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Anybody else before we go to pray? Brother Charlie, I'll ask the church to remember my family have some sickness. I ask the church to be in prayer for the loss of my family as well. If we all have lost in our families and uh, <coughs> people throughout the world that we don't even know, there's so many that needs the Lord in their life. We, we pour out our hearts to the Lord and, and say, Lord, remember yeah. them. And uh, because the main important the reason why we're here, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep His commandments. Mm -hmm. And uh, to bear witness, to receive Him down in our heart and to bear witness of Him while we're here, while it's called day, that people that's out in the world can see the Lord in us and give Him the praise and glory justly do Him. You know? mm -hmm. so that's what we want to do as Christian men and women. I oh, would like to have a part in this prayer that you your hand. God bless each and every one of you. Anybody else before we go to prayer? Brother Jerry and I, I'd like you all to remember our family when we pray. Glad you're here, Brother Bill. It's been a while since we've been out. And Lord mercy, I missed it. I missed it all the way. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. And I'm thankful that I got to come out. Yes. And Mom has started dialysis now. Actually, I'll pray for her. Remember my children there, one of his one out in Indiana and just come away from the doctor and says, pray that they'll have a safe trail. Just remember us when you pray. I really miss you all bad. It's like being shoved away from the table when you can't get back to it, you know. Yes. You we miss you too, brother. Amen. We yeah. miss our people when they're not here. We yeah. think about them and, we'll and pray for them. We hope that uh, everyone would do us the same way. Yeah. We hope you know. Amen. Absolutely. Anybody else before we go to pray? If nobody else, uh, Brother Boris, would you lead us in this prayer? Everybody pray. Everybody wants to come up front here like you can do. Here, 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 here. <coughs> Father, as we bow here before you this morning, Lord, we come, Lord, with our hearts open and receptive, Lord, into your heart as we pray. Pray, Heavenly Father, to those here today that don't know Jesus on the part of the mission of the Lord. We open up their heart to you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your support. Peace from the table. We are precious to all of us, Jesus, Lord, knowing that that's for our strength, Lord, that's for salvation. Well, we Lord, we to be our form, and we are resurrected from the offering. Lord, we just thank the church for being here by the place of the Lord. Lord, we just thank the church for being here by the place of the Lord. Lord, we just thank the church for being here by the place of the Lord. Lord, we just thank the church for being here by the place of the Lord. Lord, we just thank the church for being here by the place of the Lord. 
A lot of people will look at a lot of things and say, why? Why God? Why this? Why that? And uh, can the chunk of clay, that's what we are, every one of us, say to the potter, and God's the potter, why hast thou made me thus? It's not for us to ask, but we find ourselves doing that sometimes when we see disasters and things in the world. But everything that comes down from the Father of lights is perfect gifts. Everything, all of it. Uh, perfect gifts coming down from the Father of lights. And, and uh, we know that everything works towards good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His promises. That's all about Christian men and women. Everything works towards that is for good. The Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son, I want you to just soak this up. I know that you Christian men and women know this as good as I do because you, you've taken part in this. But I want everybody else to just soak this up. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And Daddy you say a believer is a doer of God's word. That means everything he said to do to best your understanding, do it. And it, it's simple, the things he told us to do. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now that you think about that. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Never. When this life is over, that's the end of it. You'll never see life. It's only continually dead. But the wrath of God abideth on him. The old scripture said, As the tree falleth, so shall it be. Whether it falls to the north or whether it falls to the south, so shall it be. And that's talking about this tree right here. And every tree that bringeth forth good fruit, you see, when that time comes that this tree falls, so shall it be. If it falls a good tree, bringing forth good fruit on the resurrection, it'll get up that way. If it falls a bad tree, wicked tree, not bringing forth, this is the good fruit, the things that God said to do. It will remain that way until resurrection, and it'll get up a wicked tree. Think about that. But I think about that song. It caused me to go back to this water of life that Jesus is, that Brother Paul and his group there was a singing at the first. And, and you all pray. I'm trying not to take too much time, but I want to try to follow the Spirit. Uh, we love God's people, Brother Bill. We want to reach out to them and try to convince them that Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There ain't no other way that we can get to God except through and by Him. Right. Uh, Father God said that He added to the church daily it should be saved. Jesus said, No man cometh unto me except my Father draw him. No man cometh unto the Father except through and by the Son. Think about that. So it all works together in one. And, and I thought about that song that says, I sang that the first star, that living water. And boy, <clears throat> Paul, I'm glad that I've got that living water instilled down inside of me. And I know that God's people, and that's everybody, sinner and saint, can have that living water. <coughs> that God is no respecter of persons. Peter said a long time ago in the house of Cornelius, that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he or she, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness, shall be accepted with him. Think about what a promise that we've all got now, talking about no matter what race you are, what color that you are, or who you might be, or where that you come from, that if you turn your whole heart over to the Lord, he'll be found with you. If is a great big little word, as Dad used to say. And I thought about that little woman at the well. That always brings to my mind about that living water. For, listen, Jesus, he being that spiritual well of water, the well of water, and was a sitting on the well of Jacob there one day, arresting his little self. Why? That he was working hard here upon the earth, for he knew he had just but a short time uh, to be here and to establish an everlasting gospel, an everlasting kingdom. And it is established, friend, and it is here uh, for the person that will believe can move into it. <coughs> Had the awfulest trouble with this old coronavirus. It tore my vocal tube, uh, vocal cords up and the bronchial tube. <coughs> Can't get out hardly what I want to get out, Brother Bill, sometimes. But the Lord knows my heart and He knows that I have that love, as a brother was talking about, one to another. That you know that you pass from that, uh, from that death unto life when you love the brethren. 
That is a sure indication that the Lord has forgiven you of your sin. That is a simple indication that you know that you pass from death unto life because you have a love toward all the brothers and sisters and don't want to see no harm come to anybody. As often you've done this to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me, Jesus said. And that's manifesting love. We don't want to do evil one to another, but we want to manifest that love. And I think about when Jesus was resting himself there, and you all pray that God will bless this little creature here just for a few minutes, and I'll try to get out of the way. We need each other. Can't do nothing on my own. God depend upon the Lord for everything of the natural here, and especially of the spiritual. For it is the spiritual things of God that we have a warfare to fight against principalities and evil things that's in the world. And when we tell the truth and bring forth and manifest the truth, and not only with word, but with our works, then people that's on the outside can see the Lord that's in us truly, and they'll turn their life over not over to us as church members, but over to the Lord. <laughs> but I was thinking about while Jesus was there on that well, and listen, He was tired like we get sometimes, and He was thirsty, and He wanted a little drink of water of the natural. And he knowed for surety that this woman was going to be a passing that way that day. He knowed all about it. The poor world was. Uh, he established everything uh, that is that it is. And listen, he sent those little apostles away to buy meat down there, not for just the purpose of eating something of the natural, but that he uh, I knowed how they thought about the Samaritan people. Uh, thank you, Brother Paul. And listen, he knowed exactly uh, what was going on of the animosity between those two people a long time ago in the book of Nehemiah. It was speaking about that in Ezra, that in the day that this would come about, and God, he talked about this 176 years before he ever raised up this man, and he called him his shepherd, his servant, and it was Cyrus, the king of Persia. And when he come about here, he raised him up for the purpose of directing God's people that was in bondage in that land at that time back into uh, the natural Jerusalem there and to build a temple uh, back unto God of uh, the natural temple uh, because it was already said in the old prophecies that the Lord and uh, when he come to his body uh, that he would walk into that temple that's no wonder that them old Jew boys had not believe that Jesus is the son of God uh, thinking that uh, the son of God is yet to come uh, is wanting to build a natural temple temple back. Uh, so the scriptures can be fulfilled. If they only knew what we knew, uh, uh, that it's already fulfilled. Uh, that the Lord can come and set up exactly uh, what needed to be set up here. Uh, that we've Amen. got that life down inside of us. And His name is Jesus. Amen. He is the water of life. And we're drinking from it this morning. Amen. And it's good if while I could drink from that well. It never runs dry. And here the well was on the well. And the Samaritan woman come. And they had animosity back in that time. A fool in Cyrus the king uh, sent them back there. He said, build back the temple and build back the walls and the city thereof. And when they come back in that same uh, uh, land that was called the Samaritans in the time of Jesus, uh, he wouldn't call that back there, but it's the same people uh, that was part Gentile and part Hebrew. Uh, they wanted to help the full-blooded Jews to build that natural temple. And then full-blooded Jews said, no, you'll have no part with us uh, nor building that temple back. Uh, look what they said on their own. Uh, look what they said in motion. Uh, animosity between each other. A uh, head against a head. And them old boys got mad and they throwed a monkey ranch in the uh, works when they was building back. And they had to war against them uh, uh, for a long time. So there was animosity between them and the Samaritans. Yeah. Yeah. And in the time about the 6th and 9th A.D., it was more. Or AC, I think, or AD, I can't remember anyways, after that Christ 
was already born here, they began to gather up their little bones at that time, and that temple was already there, the same one that I've been talking about of the natural, and they gathered up human bones of their people and put on the porches of that temple, which by the old covenant I defiled that natural temple of dead bones that was laid there, and there was more animosity that come against them. I saw when Jesus said, Give me to drink. And there at the well to the little woman that was at the well there, of the Samaritan woman, give me to drink. And, and listen, that little woman said, I am a Samaritan woman, and the Jews have no dealings with us. And there's great animosity between the two. God knew that a long time ago, and it was in his mind that he would end the animosity between all races and bring us together as one people, even as an Ezekiel there with the two stick, and was brought together of the whole house of Israel and all of you all that I see here today and through the generations whether that were Hebrew or whether that were Gentiles it makes no difference in the eyes of God I don't call it unclean or common that which that I cleanse so don't let the devil tell you that you have no opportunity to get in this brand new kingdom this brand new church where it's here and it's well and it's good I want you to think about this thing. This is real and there's power in it. He is God that added to a church daily and should be saved. I like that. There's nothing in me, not at all, except him that dwells down inside of us, except that he brings forth the message. I hit in vain. But if he brings forth the message, if we'll get this, a creature out of the way just for a little bit, and then souls can be edified. That means the ones that's already in the church can be fed from the table that ever stays full. Yay, but the ones that's on the outside, Brother Dale, I can hear words whereby that they can be saved. And when that still small voice uh, begins to speak to you down your heart, uh, harden not your heart, uh, uh, but open that inner door as the brother said last night. It's got the knot on the inside of it and it's up to you to open up to the Lord. Uh, he's not a forceful God. He'll not tear your door down. Uh, he'll not force his way into you. Uh, but he's a knocking right now with that still small voice of sin. Open up and I'll come in. Think about how good that is. I listen in just a little while before maybe that I even get through speaking, Brother Bill. He may split that eastern sky and there another person will be saved. We know not the hour nor the day that he cometh, but he's coming again. And I hope as far as I, and it makes no difference to what I hope, but I hope that he, I had it said way out yonder, but we don't know that and we better not tell our people that. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Amen. Now is the accepted time. Amen. Yea, glory, give me to drink. I'm a smart woman, and you have no dealings. The Jews have no dealings with us. Yeah, the Lord said, if you'd have known, if you'd only known who it was that said to you, give me the drink, you would have asked of him of that living water and he'd have given it to you. Amen. Do you know who I'm talking about today? His name is Jesus. If you ask of him, he'll give it to you freely. That's why he come and died upon the old cross of Calvary. That's why that he let wicked men drive old rusty nails in his hand and in his feet. That's why I let wicked men uh, raise him up uh, and mock him and spit upon him and all manners of evil to the natural creature. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, the sorrow that he bore as Isaiah spoke about, even to his soul, uh, what was that sorrow uh, and that punishment and that trouble? Uh, uh, sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Uh, I'm telling you, when you're loaded down in sin, uh, it's weight, uh, it's sorrow, uh, it's trouble. And Jesus bore all of our sin yes. upon the cross of Calvary right down to his soul. I want you to get this in your mind. Not only Christian men and women this morning of uh, what the Lord has done for us, but those that's on the outside, Brother Paul, that they can see what I can see, what the Lord done for us, that he give us eternal life to them that believeth and confess it with the mouth and is buried with him in water baptism, raised up to walk in newness of life, a new creature on the inside in Christ Jesus all for
former things have passed away. Behold, I'll make all things new. And he has and he does every day. Hey, glory. As she begins to say, that this well is deep and you have nothing to draw with. Whence cometh that living water? Are you greater than our father? Look at there. She was telling that old Jacob was part of her a father way back under in part. Are you greater than our father Jacob that dug this well and drunk from it and his cattle and his children? Are you greater than he is? Yea, the answer is yea that he is. He is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And there's nothing greater than that the name of Jesus that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess the glory of God. I want you to think about this. It don't shame me now and drop to bow my knees to him. He's my king and he's knighted me. And every Christian man and woman he knighted us and we're his knight. If you want to look at it that way, his disciples going all over where he sends us to to do a little work while it's called day. Because when night, when death comes on this, we can't work no more. I want you to get in this good way and feel what I feel this morning and know Jesus for your own self. And you can if you will. You know what Jesus said to her? He said that to everybody, Brother James. Sure he did. Absolutely. It's still just as true today, brother, as it was when it was said a long time ago. With that, still got the same power. That's right. Jesus said to her, "said If a man or woman drinks from this well, you're going to thirst again. But I'm telling you, the water that I have, if you drink from it, you'll never thirst again." Uh, for the water that I have to give, uh, it will be down inside of you, a well of water uh, springing up unto everlasting life. Uh, whether we're going up and down the road driving, uh, thinking about the good things of God, uh, we're drinking from that water, Brother Terry. I'm telling you, and it lets us know that uh, without a shadow of doubt, we belong to the Lord, and we're filled. Wherever that we want to be filled, we're filled. Yeah. One old rider said, my cup runneth over. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see some of this natural water flowing out, running down the old face. That's part of it. But sometimes you can see by the, uh, the actions of our people rejoicing, shouting, uh, uh, preaching, getting loud, uh, jumping around. No, that ain't the gospel. Uh, but that's what it makes this old creature feel like doing. Uh, the gospel will set you free uh, if you believe it indeed. Yeah. And I can't do nothing for you except tell you about the one that can't do it for you. And his name is Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Uh, from the front of that book to the back of it. Uh, he is the great one, the Son of God. Uh, the one that was prophesied to come. And he's already come and he's given us all. Just like what I was reading. To him or she that believe it can receive the glory of the only begotten Son of God. His name is Jesus. You'll thirst again if you drink from this well. But if you drink from my well, you ain't going to thirst no more. I never sought for another well. And when I found the perfect one that's got the sweet water running from it, and it's eternal, it's down inside of me. I've never sought for nothing else because I've got the best. How about you, Christian men and women? Amen. We've got the best, haven't we? I'm here to brag on the one that gave us the best, and he's got it for everybody. It's not his will that any should perish, but all come unto repentance. And if you'll do that, I'll tell you for a certainty, you'll live and life more abundantly down here and everlasting life to come when life's over. Think about it. Hey, glory. And when he talked about how wonderful that water, that well down inside, she said, she sounded like she was pretty smart, didn't she? Yeah. Hey, what is that? She said, give me this water to drink. Now, Bill, she didn't fully understand it. I'm telling you all that's here today, you may not understand all this. Maybe your mind is confused from so many doctrine that's going on from the devil anymore. But I'm telling you this doctrine that of Jesus is simple. That he is a heart searcher. This word at which we speak, listen, it is sharper than any two-edged sword dividing us under soul and spirit, joint and marrow. Dividing soul and spirit. You, if you're outside the church, you have a spirit that's not of God. When that spirit, that word goes down like a sharper than two-edged sword, he'll divide that. 
It will conquer you if you will let it. And when it divides that, the stronger man, if you want to go through with all of it, the stronger man, which is Jesus, he'll bind up the strong man and he'll cast him out. See you, Satan. You're out. <laughs> That's how simple that it is. To the moment that you believe with all your heart that God is. And he's seeking diligently this morning after some more people to be added to the church. Yeah, yeah. Brother Paul, I'd like to see him hundred come, wouldn't you? Yeah. Do that. Some people say, that's impossible. I'm telling yeah. you with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Sometimes we don't ask enough. Our doubt gets in the way a lot, but I'm telling you that faith the brother was talking about, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to see some evidence, don't yeah. you? Yeah. That means when you come out of the field of sin and you walk that little body up here and say, as for me and my house, I am I going to serve the Lord? That's some good evidence, ain't it? And when you confess like that and then are buried with Christ in the water baptism, that's some good evidence, ain't it? Yea, glory, the answer of a good conscience towards God is water baptism. That's what he said in the scripture. Go ye into all the world, preach my gospel, whosoever believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. God's gospel is simple. Some people try to make it hard, but I'm telling you, the old man be a fool away from him, man. He shouldn't err there, he shouldn't. Give me the drink. I hope Brother Bruce say something here this morning and said, Lord, I ain't got that water to give you. I can't pour it out of mine. It don't work that way, no. But there's plenty of it. It's coming from the throne of grace. And his name is Jesus. And I hope that there's something this morning say, give me the drink. Think about it. Wouldn't that be good this morning? Amen. That's good any time. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning is good. Hey, call me if you're ready for the church. I'll be happy. I'll come out of there. You know. Yeah, let's go, boys. Let's go to the water. It sounds good to me. Look what the Lord has done for us, Brother Bill. That's the least we can do, ain't it? Glory to the Lamb of God. Think about how good that He is. Hey, give me the drink. You know what she had to do? Do you know what that we had to do when we was lost people? Bro, Paul, we had to lay it all out in front of Jesus, did we? Remember me mentioned a while ago we can't remember all the sins that we've done? But I'm telling you the ones that we can remember, we know that we've sinned and come short of the glory of God. And boys, I'm telling you, 36 years ago when I was at a little church, in my mind it was as if I just bundled it, everything that I could remember and laid it right to feet of Jesus. I said, Lord... Here it is. You know all about it already and more than what I can tell you. My puny mind can't remember it all, but you know all about it. Here it is. I'm going to lay it at your feet. This is what the little woman had to do. Listen, Jesus knows everything in her life, but she had to come to the conclusion that he did know it. And he said, go get thy husband. And she said, Lord, I have none. And Jesus answered and said, Thou hast had five husbands, and the one that you've got now is not your own. Well, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Yea, he was more than a prophet, as one yeah. man wrote about it. Yeah. He's a son of God. He's a savior of the world. He's yeah. king of kings and lord of lords. He is salvation unto a man or woman that will believe and come out of the field of sin. Uh, lay it at the feet of Jesus say, here it is. Uh, everything that I know, I know that I've come short of your glory. Would you just please apply your blood to me and make me white as snow in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, glory when I done that, Brother Terry. Yeah. He poured his blessings out on me and I know that, that I'd come from a death unto life because that scripture come to my mind on that morning and I began to look back to that congregation. Why did I do that? Because the old Satan was already saying that was too simple, son. It's more complicated than that. That's the way the devil likes to present. Oh, it's not that easy to get your life or soul saved. It is. And I was broken, man. I thought, have I jumped the gun? I didn't know who was talking to me at that time. Didn't know all about the scriptures. But I'll tell you what, the Lord put it on my mind plain and simple. He, and I couldn't quote the scripture, but boy, I quoted that in my mind that morning. You know that you passed from death 
unto life because you love the brother. And that's why I turned my head on the front seat and looked back through there. And I loved every one of them. And boy, you're talking about when I had that faith in that knowing for a shorty that Satan I could not lie to me and cause me to fall from God's grace. It was me that was trusting in the Lord, faith to Him, that He lifted me up in that spirit strong. And I know that I'd become a son of God. And you came this morning, lost man or lost woman. Sons and daughters of God, the greatest honor that could ever be bestowed on people. Think about, hey, listen, I perceive that that our prophet, what she said to him, wasn't it? Yeah. Then she was looking at them colors that was on Jesus. They used to wear colors that told them who they was. That's how she knew that he was a Jew. Yeah. Sitting at the well. Yeah. She already knew who she was. She knew where she was at. That's why she'd come out at 12 day noon. In the heat of the sun to go get her water. She knew what kind of life she'd been living. Lord knows all about it. Lord set all that up to be just exactly the way that it was. Amen. He set it up this morning to be just exactly the way that it is. Amen. Now you've got one more opportunity and chance to turn your little soul over to the Lord. And you'll never, never be sorry of it. But you'll go on your way rejoicing. A happy little pilgrim on our journey. This is just by wishing. I'm going to tell you how I feel. I wish I could come to you right now, throw them arms around you and say, you're in the church now, brother. It don't work that way. But the loving arms of Jesus is here today in His strength and His power. What would He just say? Come, I want to put my arms around you. You're talking about a blanket of comfort. You're talking about perfect. His name is Jesus and you can have Him this morning. Yay! That woman began to say to Jesus there, that day, new day, son. Hey, you know our fathers, they worship in these mountains and you say, had that men ought to worship in Jerusalem there, the temple. That's how she knew that he was a Jew of colors. Christian men and women, are we showing our colors? We're Jews inwardly, aren't we? Are we manifest, uh, manifesting the love of God till he comes to the outside and people can see the Lord in us? That's showing our colors, aren't it? Yes. Glory. Listen, I'm telling you on that day, she said, our fathers worshipped in these mountains and you say that men ought to worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus said, the hour is coming when men shall not worship in these mountains, nor in Jerusalem. You worship, woman, you know not what. For salvation at that moment was just to the Jews. But the hour is coming, Jesus said, and now is. He said that to her and it's been that way ever since. When men shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, and He seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and truth. Boy, I'm telling you, them old wheels. She knows some of them scriptures, didn't she? Did she know all about it? No, she didn't know all about it. She knows some of them. She didn't study them. Them old wheels start turning in her mind. You know. In the scriptures, Messiah's coming. Wonder why that she was thinking about that man right there in there. Messiah's coming. Which is called Christ. She made a claim, didn't she? When he comes, he'll tell us all things. You reckon that he told her all things? You think, listen, he met, Bro Paul, everything that's ever been said is not put in the scriptures. He may have talked to her sis for a long time and told her a lot, a lot more than that. Yeah. We don't know that, but I'm she telling you what that he that. told her was the truth and she knew it. Right. There ain't no hiding from Jesus. Amen. He already knows it. What he expects out of us to let it to feed of Jesus. Yeah. Here it is. He knows. He can take care of it. And when we do that, <coughs> with that broken contrite right. spirit and no wise, will he turn us away? We've got to manifest. And listen. When them old ship captains would come in, they better have that manifest of what their cargo was and get in trouble. Here it is. They'd go through it and say, yeah, it's all here. <laughs> we got a manifest. 
I need to turn it over to the captain, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Here it is. And it's, that's, all, that's all I can think of. <coughs> He'll say, good enough. I know that thou art but just dust. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> that's good. And Jesus said to her, when he spoke those things there, or she spoke to him, yeah. I that speak unto thee, and he. And he who? The Messiah. And who? The Christ. I that speak unto thee, and he. Do you think she believed that? I believe she believed it. Yeah. He told her too much. Did she get everything that she needed on that day? No, it wasn't all established yet, but she got a real good start. If she'd have died that day, she'd have been all right in the eyes of God. Let me put it that way. But after that God established the things that he did with Jesus, that the preachers would go out and preach, and they'd take them to the water and baptize them. At the first of the church, the foundation. That's what we're supposed to do now. From that time on. If she lived to that point, to when that was established, Brother Bill, I think she'd have done it, don't you? <laughs> because she loved the one that was talking to her. His name is Jesus. Because I'm telling you, I believe that he freed her up. She dropped her pot, she wasn't a bit worried about natural water. <laughs> is your belly getting hungry of the natural? When you get to the Lord in your life, you'll forget about that for a little while. Especially when you're in that spirit. Yeah. I'm telling you, she dropped the old water pot, and them old pots will show up. Scratch her head like Bill Johnson. <laughs> Think about it. Wondering in her mind, why in the world is Jesus talking to her? Well, she's a Samaritan. You see how their hearts and minds work. And, and why is she speaking to Jesus? Who does she think she is? Now, that's what they were thinking in their minds. But you know what? Them old boys are pretty smart. They didn't say a word. They knew who they was in front of. His name was Jesus. And Jesus won't talk to who Jesus wants to talk to. They'll figure it out later, just like us. Yes. Listen, she dropped the old pot, and I can see that woman. Yeah, boy, I've got some good news to tell them about. Now, she might have been a gossiper before, but a lot of people know her. God picked people that a lot of people know, sends them out in the world. Don't never let the devil tell you that you can't do something for Jesus out in the world. Every one of you all, women and men, get out there and work. Amen. Hey, people watching us. She went down there and she said, Hey, my people down the smart. They blood headed men. Oh, she's looking at her. She's clawing at you. Come see a man that told me everything I ever did. Is not this the Christ the Messiah that was promised unto our people? Here they come. We hope that people start doing that. Time's running out. The Lord's calling out you today, but it may end since just a little while. It could. It's in the scriptures that they believed that Jesus was the Messiah because of what she said. Then some other than knuckle-headed men, stubborn, God will still save them, sis. He'll still save people. He wants to save people. They come out and heard Jesus from himself. What did they say, Jesus? When they began to hear him tell, they said, would you stay with us a couple more days? We want to hear some more. You all got the mind of that? You want to stay here? Not leave, get nothing to eat naturally, just a couple more days. Just listen to Jesus, whether it be I or they, just so Jesus is preached. Are we there? They was. A couple of days, stayed right there with them. Listen to things of Jesus. And you know what them old men said? said, now we believe because we've heard him for ourselves and know indeed that this is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Do you want to leave today out that door and know for a surety, make things right, and say, I know for myself that Jesus is surely the Messiah, the Savior of the world, Amen. the Christ that was promised a long time ago. He's still here today. He dwells in men and women. And we've been made one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he wants to make everybody one with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And Brother Bill, if the world was one with the Lord, you wouldn't see what's going on right now. But we'd say, glory, hallelujah. No box.
And let me tell you, friend, in heaven's country, it's going to be better than that. <laughs> Brother said, no locks, <laughs> no doors, <laughs> no guns, no guns, <laughs> no bickering, no fighting, no fussing. No Perfect peace, harmony forevermore. Why? Because all of these things and animosities are going to be wiped away when we got the glorified body. I'm looking forward to it. When I look in the old mirrors, my daddy said several years ago, he said, I'm going back to the dust in which I came. But this inward man that I can't see with natural eyes, he's getting stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Get closer yeah. all the time. Yeah. You talk to me about being absent from this body is to be present with the Lord, Amen. which is far better than the scripture says. You think about how good it is going to be. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> What's wrong? Hide this long body. There's a miller here the other day told me, he said, I was getting like Roger Mangum. So. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I love Roger, so I'll just leave it right here. I thank you, Brother Terry, Brother Bill's here. Brother Bill, come take what time? Come here. Come here. You've got some time. Come take some time. I'd rather fire the room, too. I'd rather hear, listen, and believe. Listen, I think this is you. Know, my brother, I'm exercise. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to be a long time. But I ain't sorry for taking the time when the Spirit comes upon us, like the brother said. Yeah. We need to follow the Lord. Listen. You're all right. Bless him all. I wish Brother Newton would have closed it out. I felt so good when we were preaching. We're glad for our visitors. You know, God's grace is amazing. Amen. It, it is. is. It is. His grace is. If you just look around at what He's done yeah. and what He can do, that's the money. Yeah. Well, he can take this old vile body and transform it into someone who loves. Mm -hmm. He can transform me into someone I used to not be. That's right. Absolutely. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that because the road I was on wasn't a good path. And you know, everybody has to go down their own road when they come into this world. And I thought of how many of the old brethren have stood and told people what they must do to inherit eternal life. Think about it. They poured their heart, their soul, their mind, everything they had into it. Because they wanted you and the people that was then to have what they did. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we want today. We want everybody. You know, the Bible teaches us it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. Amen. And if you don't, and you leave this world without Jesus Christ in your life, it's your own fault. That's right, yeah. You can't blame nobody but yourself because God is making a way. He's made a way thousands of years. That door that Brother was talking about, the table that's always full, that door is always open, but one of these days it's going to be shut. Yeah. And when it closes, just like back in the days of Noah, when that ark door closed, that's it. Yeah. There's no chance of getting in. None whatsoever. He teaches us in the scriptures. He says the work while it's yet day for when night comes. The night he was talking about, I believe, was death. Yes. When you die, there's nothing else you can do. When we go to visit you at the funeral home, everybody will come up and say, well, you know, that was a good godly man right there. Well, they say, boy, I hate to leave like he did. I thought in my mind many times when I go up to a cash, wondering what they saw. When they left this old world, you know God don't tell us in there. But I'll tell you one thing He teaches. That we're, we're going to a place we're going to enjoy. Yeah. Amen. We're going to a place that He said His Son went to prepare for us. He said that where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yeah. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. That's the one that loved me so much as the song they sang a while ago when they laid him on the cross and began to drive those nails in his hands. We can't say he didn't love us. That's right. 
Because one thing he could have done, he could have called 10 legs of angels, 10,000 legs of angels if he wanted to, to come and take him down off the cross or before he ever got there. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, could have went back home to his father and said, I don't want it no more. Let him have it. Because of the way they was to He had this natural body like we had. But there was something that he had in his mind that he was going to do when he was sent here upon this earth, and that was to do the will of his Father that sent him. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's something to be thankful for. He didn't have to do that. He could have destroyed everyone. Look the way he died all the way back. Solomon and Gomorrah destroyed him and swapped him off the face of the earth. Eight soldiers came for water, but no one came on the yard. No one was there. He could do it again. But he said he loves us. He loves each and every one of us that's here. Far more than we'll ever know. God loves us. And he sent that prayer. How many of us could do that? There's not one in this house that could do that. But he did. He loved us. I want to read to you a little bit here in, in the book of Romans. Brother Jim brought so many things to our minds. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> yeah, that's, where you get. that's where you'll find that peace with God. Yeah. If you don't come through Him, there's people telling you all over the world that there's other ways that we can get into heaven. Yeah. Not according to the Scripture. If we come through Jesus Christ, God's precious Son, we'll have peace with God. Yeah. He's the one that we have to plead. Jesus Christ is the one He sent into this world, standing with the door always open. When He came in, the people were talking about He said, I am the door, I am the way, I am the light. Amen. No man cometh unto me except my Father which sent me draw him. If God's is drawing you, you need to come unto Him because it may be your last opportunity. I don't know. Amen. Think about it. You read in the Scriptures about people that turned Him away. So I wonder so many times about like a King Solomon. You can read about him, how that he obeyed God and done everything that God had asked him to do, and then he turned from Went back to his wicked ways. Done things that he shouldn't have done. Read about them all down through the old Bible, some of the old kings that God loved and he appointed the king. He was the one that told the prophets and them who to make king and what they must do in his presence. Do we do what God commands us to do? You'll never be perfect in this life, but there's coming a day according to the scriptures where God will make us all perfect. There's a part of us that's perfect now. This inward man, I believe if Jesus Christ is dwelling within us, is perfect. Yeah, yeah. Because he won't dwell in an unclean temple. And the only way that you can have him is when God begins to draw you. He knows that you're seeking something and your heart is getting right. He said he has no lies turn you away. Amen. Oh. God And that amazing grace. I love that song because His grace is definitely amazing. Amen. Amen. If you stop and think about what God could have done, but He did. He could have destroyed every one of us. He could have fixed it to where none of us could have ever been allowed to go in the head. God could have done that. But that amazing grace. You know, Paul, there was a man one time after he was converted, he approached God and told him, he said, I have a thorn in the flesh. Satan's always there to mess at me. Would you remove it? He approached him three times. Now, if you think you're going to be perfect once you get this way, you've got something else coming because you're not going to be. Satan will always buffet you just like he did Paul. And what did God tell him? He said, my grace is sufficient. Amen. God is able to keep that which we committed to. If we walk in a manner that's pleasing unto God, He will watch over us and guide us and lead us. And the woman at the well that the brother preached about, she knew then in her mind, I believe, when she left her, who Jesus Christ was. 
There's things you can read about in the Bible that we don't fully understand, but one thing we do understand that God loved us so much that He sent His Son into this world that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay. What more do you want? If you get in the shape that I was in, you're going to do something. All right. I wouldn't have cared if it had been a million people standing there. When God moved upon me and I was ready, it didn't matter what people thought or said about me or anything. I knew that I needed what some of those people that were telling me about had. And these old brethren that you've heard about that preached years ago that's dead and gone, their legacy's gone, but their words still remain in the Scripture. Absolutely. Same words. Same words that they preached about out of this book, the King James Version of the Holy Bible, where God moves upon these people to write these words down for us to understand what He wants us to understand. Right. There's many things that wasn't written in this book, but we don't need to know about. Paul was called up into the third heaven, it says. He said, I knew of a man of 14 years ago, whether out of the body in the body, I know not was called up into the third heaven, and he said, I saw things that was not lawful for man to utter. God told him, he said, don't say nothing about this. And it wasn't wrote in there what he saw. But he gave us enough, didn't he? God gave us enough that we might be saved. We might know what we need. And we might seek after that. And they'll always listen. There'll always be somebody will tell you what you must do to inherit each other. Brother Junior planted the seed this morning. I'm watering just a little bit. That's where it works. But God's going to give the increase Amen. if you come. You can say, if you come the way you're supposed to and God gives the increase, I believe you'll stay. Yeah. But there's so many people that's come on their own and don't know what they're doing. I believe when God's dealing with you and you move because of Him, you're going to be there. Amen. God knows what we need before yes, we ever yes. ask. He knows. Yes, you know, we ask for prayer requests and things. Yeah. God knows before we ever open our mouth, hold it for Him. Well, yeah. 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 And I thought many times in my life, Lord, why would you allow me to do that? Different things that I didn't want, you know, didn't think I should have done or said or thought coming across my mind. But you know what? He told Paul the same thing. <laughs> So Paul the same thing. He said, you just keep working at it, son. He said, my grace is sufficient. Yeah. Keep going on like I told you. If we keep traveling here upon his footstool and doing the things that he commands us to do and walking, you know the word Christian means Christ-like. That's right. How many of them is Christ-like? They wouldn't have got on his mouth. There were things he didn't do that I do. His mind was to fulfill the will of His Father that sent Him. Now once we're born again, then that, that should be our minds. That we want to fulfill the will of God that called us under repentance, that's guiding us, that's leading us, that's within us, helping us, watching over us. Did you ever think about why this country has it been at so, at peace so many years? Because of God's love. But it's changed. It's changed. There's so many people in the world today that don't even believe there is a God, but they will. You know, I hate to tell people that, but God is going to show them one of these days what they missed. Because I believe the Bible teaches us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You either do it in this life while that breath of life is in you and you're able to walk around and God has given us another opportunity or you will do it on that day. That's right. He said we will. I believe your word he said. God has given us so much to think about in the scripture. And He blesses us through the Scriptures, through the brothers preaching, through our brothers and sisters that we love so dearly anymore. There's people that I used to despise. I'll just be honest with you. Didn't want to be around them. Because I learned to love. I can hug your neck. Not because of what I've done, but because of what He did. When Jesus Christ
Christ is dwelling within you, you become a new creature. Trust me. There's things that you will no longer have a desire to do. Paul said, the things I once did, I do not. And the things I do not, now I do. I want to do them. Christ will put a new thought mind inside you and let you believe the things that He's commanded us to believe and the things that He's wrote down for us to understand. He's given us enough in there that we can find out what we must do to inherit eternal life. These are the instructions that we need, and the brother expanded on them real well. Oh, I thought. Yeah, yeah. And I wish you were in so that was, my heart was full. I was full, and I'm still full. Praise the Lord. Because God has given us this table that never runs dry. This water is well watered. It never goes dry. We can suck from it at any time we want to. And he said, if you'll accept me in your heart, me and my Father will come in and we will suck with you. We will take our abode in you. And when they move in, son, there's a different fellow there. Yeah, it's not the same old man you used to be. That's right. People you see out here running up and down the road doing whatever they wanted to do, and you see them after Jesus Christ got home. <coughs> Complete different person. Right. And I thank God for that today. Amen. Amen. You can get a song. Sing a song. Whatever you want to do. Sister Bonnie, we've mentioned them words too many times for you not to sing that song. I'll <laughs> sing it back here. You can if you want to. Sing it where you want to. Sing it right here. While she sings that song, somebody right ready for the church. Come up and let me know. <laughs> Walking in the love that leads home. Yeah. Eating from the table that never says home. Drinking from the fountain that never runs dry. Going to a country where it never shall burn. Think about it. Oh, oh, oh. 
Good place to go. And also, if the Lord blesses us, we'll be attending the next week. That's a good place to go. Yes, oh, absolutely, brother. Yes. Any other points? Yeah, yes. If there's nothing else, Brother Paul gives a dismissal right? Glad to hear. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Dear Lord, thank you for what we've heard today. Yes. Go with us, dear Heavenly Father, wherever we go, to the places we call home, until we meet again, somewhere. Through Jesus' name we pray, and amen. 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 Thank you.